Hi, I'm KiloGolf2 Charlie, also licensed as LZ1 AMA, and today I'm going to show you how I build my dual band antenna with four elements on two meters and five elements on 70 centimeters that I plan to use for amateur satellites. Stay tuned! Okay, the first thing that we're going to need is the DK7ZB website where we have the plans for the antenna. It's www.qsl.net slash dk7zb. And once you're there, you enter the page. And on the left, there's a list of his projects. What we need today is the duo and tri-band Yagis. There, he describes how this works in principle, in theory, with the open sleeves. But what we're interested in is the practical sizes. For 2 meter and 70 centimeter, 4 plus 5 elements. We click on it and we see some pictures, generic pictures with fewer elements. We click on it again. And this is what we're building. However, this antenna is the ultralight version of it with 3.2 millimeter elements. What we need is at the bottom of the page with 8 millimeter or 10 millimeter elements, which is what I built with 8 millimeter out of aluminum pipe. That's his uh, choke balance. Those are the sizes using 3.2 millimeter if you're using aluminum rods. And these are the pictures of the more sturdy permanent antennas using the uh, aluminum pipe. So this is really the table that we're after, the one at the end. It shows you the numbers of the elements. There's nine elements total, four plus five. What they do, if they're reflector, director, or the radiating element, which is just one. The position on the boom. A boom length of one meter is enough to hold everything, but you can get two meters if you want to have a handle. Note that the diameter of uh, each element changes the length of the element that you should be using. So, you know, pay careful attention to these and measure carefully uh, to the millimeter, I would say. Maybe leave a few millimeters extra for the radiator to adjust it, but I found I didn't need to adjust it and these lengths were perfect. Okay, and now on to measuring. First, I mark the length of each element on the aluminum pipe, and then I label them using the masking tape. That way, I will not confuse the elements. I take the box that will contain the ballon and the RF connector, and I make holes in each end so that the boom can pass through it. Make sure that the holes for the boom are nice and tight so it isn't loose in them. I took out my workbench on the balcony and I secured each element into it and then cut at the previously marked line. Having the workbench was of great help because I don't know how I would do this cutting and add the task that I have to do inside the apartment. So if you live in an apartment and have a balcony, I highly recommend that you get a cheap workbench like the one I got. Next I secure the boom in the workbench and I mark the center of the boom on each of the lengths I have measured based on the table. Then I drill a pilot hole with the 2 millimeter drill bit or the 2.5 if uh, that works better for you. After I have the pilot holes I drill the main holes for the elements using the 8 millimeter drill bit which matches the 8 millimeter tube that I am using. I secure the elements by sliding them through the hole and then sliding vinyl tubing over the elements. Here I am using 10 millimeter vinyl tubing over the 8 millimeter pipe. This is the hardware I will need to connect the coax to the radiating element. I will need to drill holes for the bolts through the pipe. Unlike the other elements, the hole for the radiating element is big enough for the tubing to pass through completely. The radiating elements pass through the box and then enter the tube which gives them stability. But the two parts of the radiating element do not touch each other. Next I prepare the ballon and secure the center conductor and the braid of the coax using the hardware I showed you earlier. The ferrite is MIX61 from ferrite and is suitable for frequency applications from 200 MHz to 1000 MHz. I added an SO239 connector and soldered the coax to it. The first element has to be 1013 mm but the pipe I bought was only 1000 mm. So I extended it by cutting it in half and adding a piece of 6mm threaded rod which fit perfectly inside. You can use pliers to get a tighter fit. 
Then I secured the element using two pieces of vinyl tubing, one on each side of the boom. For all other elements, I marked the center and five millimeters away from the center to know where they should be inserted on the boom, which is 10 millimeters wide. I slid a piece of vinyl tubing at one of the marks and inserted the element into the boom and then slid the other piece of tubing, checking for the marks I made earlier. And this is the complete antenna. All right, so that's how I built the antenna using pretty much uh, very minimal tools because uh, I didn't have a lot of tools to begin with here. Basically, I got a very cheap uh, workbench, um, you know, the kind that you can get for 20, 30 bucks or so, uh, and a hacksaw, the cheapest one I could uh, get as well, a drill with a few drill bits uh, to drill all the holes. You know, I needed two millimeters, two and a half millimeters, eight millimeters, 10 millimeters, just a standard set would do. Uh, six pieces of aluminum pipe, the eight millimeter variety, because uh, that was the same price as six millimeters over here. And the 10 millimeter type was uh, more expensive. So eight millimeters it was. And then for the boom, I had to compromise. I really wanted a 20 by 20 millimeter square boom but uh, they didn't have it in stock right now so i compromised and i got the 20 by 10 millimeter and i'm sorry i did that because now that the antenna is built you know you can see it over here and if you look at the boom basically some of the elements are wobbly because the boom is not wide enough uh, and you know if, if i had gotten the square boom uh, it would have uh, you know that would have been better the short elements are fine uh, uh, and you know some of the long elements because i'm using the vinyl tubing to really you know keep them there but the long element uh, didn't work out that well and uh, part of it is my whole I, uh, my fault because i did the hole a, a little too big there uh, and if i had to redo it i would use the square boom and maybe i would have gotten a longer piece and just uh, cut it to size to size in that way i don't have that problem um, the other way to really you know improve on this is to use the same um, insulators that you see on the dk7 zb website which basically put the elements above the boom instead of through the boom. Uh, and, you know, that way you have the elements insulated from the boom and also, you know, going perpendicular to the boom. Um, I think that would be an improvement. But overall, I think it uh, looks good and it will work well. I will stabilize this a little bit and I will add some spacers of some sort to the other elements to, you know, Keep them in place better especially with the wind but overall it's a success and you know i wanted to show that it's possible to build this kind of antenna without having a house with a yard or a lot of space or a lot of tools just with minimal stuff and some time on the weekend and you can do it in about a day you know with the shopping and the research of how to do it cutting marking everything so yeah i i think it's a success and uh, I wish you good luck in building it and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Until next time, this is LZ1AMA, also licensed as Kilogolf2Charlie. 7-3.